Hey, it's Professor Gould again, and in this section we are going to talk about the markings on the sacrum and the coccyx. Really, the coccyx doesn't have much to offer. It's four or five little bones to work with. The sacrum, on the other hand, has a bunch of markings that we need to know. Um, and as long as you remember that it is five vertebrae fused together, then all of these markings make sense. Starting at the top, this is the posterior side of the sacrum, which makes sense because we've got this median sacral crest, which is the result of the spinous processes fusing together, creating this crest or ridge down the posterior side of the bone. And then you remember that all vertebrae have a vertebral foramen that the spinal cord passes through. When these bones fuse together, those foramina fused together as well, and they created a canal, we call this the sacral canal, and it travels down behind this through those, what were the vertebral foramen. It exits at this space, the sacral hiatus. So this opening is the hiatus, the pathway through there is the canal. Okay, so that's important to remember that distinction. A lot of people, if I say, what's the tube running through here, they'll say hiatus. No, the hiatus is just the opening at the bottom, okay? The canal, remember a canal is like a, a tube. So the canal is the long pathway through the sacrum. Uh, it's not actually the spinal cord going through here at this point, it's the cauda equina. You remember that bundle of nerves down at the bottom. The uh, end of the cauda equina and the phylum terminale exit through the sacral hiatus and then the phylum terminale anchors to the coccyx down here. Okay, what else we have? We have superior articular facets here that articulate with the inferior articular facets on the L5 vertebra, so the, the most inferior of the lumbar vertebrae. We have uh, sacral foramina on the front and the back, and it's really the same hole, but just remember that there are intervertebral foramen between uh, vertebrae that the spinal nerves exit through, and uh, they need to exit to the front and the back. Okay, and so um, these uh, posterior sacral foramina are the ones that the posterior rami travel through. And then when we look at the front, we'll see anterior sacral foramina that the anterior rami and the uh, rami community contes travel through. We also have this surf surface on the side called the auricular surface here and here. And uh, that may be confusing because you may be thinking, does an oracle mean ear? Yes, someone looked at this and thought that this was ear shaped. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but this is where the hip bones articulate, the os coxi. And they also have, each one has an auricular surface that articulates with this auricular surface. Now, when we look at the front of the sacrum, we see a promontory, which is uh, was the body of the S1 vertebra before it fused. So it's now called the sacral promontory. Uh, we see uh, transverse ridges that were the intervertebral discs, now mineralized and turned to bones, and they leave these little um, ridges. And then we have the anterior sacral foramina that the anterior rami pass through. The pointy part is the apex of the uh, sacrum. The flat part is the base. The top is the base, the bottom is the apex. Yes, I know that's backwards, but remember this is a triangle. The big flat part is the base and the pointy part is the apex. Um, and let's see what else do we have. We have the, uh, that's it. And then the CO, C, little case O, is the uh, marking for the coccyx. I have never asked anyone about that on the test, so just know that this is the coccyx. When we look at a cross-section through the sacrum, we can see that sacral canal going through here, through what used to be the vertebral foramina, and then at the bottom, the sacral hiatus, where the last of the cauda equina exits. And then we can see these transverse ridges, which are the fused vertebral, uh, intervertebral discs. 
Uh, we have superior articular facets. We don't have inferior articular facets. Those have all fused together within this buff. And the uh, anterior and posterior sacral foramina. Okay, the coccyx, three to five bones, usually, few, usually four, begin to fuse about age 25-ish. Um, now, in males, uh, normally the coccyx, coccyx tilts anteriorly toward the front. In females, it tilts inferiorly or kind of goes straight down, and that's so that the coccyx doesn't get in the way of the birth canal. Uh, you won't be looking at our classroom skeletons, but just know that on an articulated skeleton, the coccyx gets broken very frequently, and so it's really common that the coccyx is not pointing in the right direction. Okay, that will end that there, and then in the next section, we will talk about the ribcage.